after the images have been aligned, the next step is to go to workflow and you can see that the options for build dense cloud, build mesh, build tiled model have all been added now. So we're going to click on build dense cloud. Again, you get some advanced options. You get to choose the quality. And again, there's very little difference between ultra high and high. So I'm just going to stay with the high value. Click OK. And progress bars will appear. Again, this may take a considerable amount of time, depending on how many images you have and what speed your computer operates at. But uh, what it's doing is it's taking that sparse point cloud that the aligned image made. You'll remember that it was transparent when you zoomed in. Uh, it's going to take that and it's going to add a very large number of points within that original cloud, therefore making it denser. The original sparse cloud was used as the alignment tool to get all the images aligned and now Metashape is going back and populating the uh, 3D environment with uh, many more points. With the dense point cloud completed, we can recenter the image, zoom in, and we can confirm that the process has worked by opening up the drop down on the left. And we can see that it's built a dense cloud with 1,374,804 points from an initial um, sparse point cloud of 25,826 based on the 57 images. So now that we've done that, we'll go back onto the selection tool, we double click in the center, we will save. And then the next step in the workflow is to build our mesh. Once again, you get some options with this, including advanced. Where you're taking the data from, um, you can take it from the sparse cloud. That was the initial tie points when we aligned. The depth maps that are a product of the dense cloud or the dense cloud itself. I'm going to select the dense cloud. It's going to now make a series of polygons that link the different points within the dense point cloud. So you can see the quality is going to be influenced by how small they are and how many points they link. So I'm going to take highs. It's going to make 200,007. 200, yeah. It's going to make 274,951 small triangles linking points in the dense point cloud. So this will take a while and hit OK. So you can think of the mesh either as, as I just explained, joining polygons between the different points in the dense point cloud, or you can think of the point cloud as a, as a swarm or as a 3D shape in its own right, and then imagine draping um, a flexible surface across all of that. Again, the time this takes depends on the size of your dense point cloud. This is dependent on the uh, quality and number of images and also the speed of your computer. Now that the mesh has been generated, we have something that looks like a real 3D model that's going to be useful. The model itself looks pretty crisp. You can see that there's a lot of the surface it was sitting on on the turntable has been identified as well. So the first thing we have to do is center in on that and zoom in and attempt to remove it. And this can take quite a while and it's worth doing it well. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole process for this sample. Um, there's a couple of shortcuts that can be taken. One is to use the freeform selection and simply take off big chunks, like so. You get a lot of little objects that are just floating off in space. But a really nice 
trick. Zoom out. Because this sample was sitting flat on the turntable, we can rotate it such that its base, this line here, the base of it sitting on top of the white plastic of the turntable, is flat. Means anything below that line we can remove. And obviously you've got to worry about how the sample is tilted. If you're tilted forward like this, you'll miss cutting off stuff in the back. If you're tilted the other way, you'll actually take some of your sample away. So it takes a little bit of practice, but here where we can see two mutually perpendicular surfaces, you can see that the base of the is parallel to the horizontal bar at the bottom of the screen. So we can use the rectangle selection tool and select all that white space and you can see I've also selected quite a large amount of the sample and that's going to be okay because we have two chunks representing the top and the bottom therefore the four sides of the sample we're looking at two of them now those four sides are complete in both of the chunks so we can afford to, to remove some of the actual sample here because we know it's duplicated in the other chunk so we really speed things up. We go back to our navigate tool and rotate around. We can still see there's a little bit of stuff we want to get rid of. I'm just going to do a very quick job here. Normally I would zoom in a lot closer. But we select that, hit delete, and then we save. And with a sample that's a simple shape like this, this can be done relatively quickly. Uh, with a with many uh, mineral samples that is the case with many rock samples this is a very can be a very slow process um, if we zoom in on our sample so we'll center it again we zoom in we can see it's really quite grainy we're looking at the mesh that's making up these facets and it's trying to take the color from the dense point cloud from each of those points we can see what they look like in more detail so if we take off shade and we go to model solid, that's what the mesh actually looks like. And then we can see the mesh as a wireframe. Those are all the little triangles and polygons that have been made where the points in the dense point cloud are nodes. If we go back to the shaded image, you can see when we zoom in, it's really not very good quality. What we have right now is a very good 3D model of the shape of the sample, but not a good representation of what the sample looks like in terms of, of an image. So the next step is return to workflow and hit build tiled model. And it's going to work with either the maps, the dense point cloud or the mesh will stay with dense cloud. And you can see again, we can open up some advanced options that don't really matter. I'm going to turn the face count to medium. And what it's going to do is it's now going to take the individual images from our photo gallery at the bottom that were used to generate the uh, sparse and dense point clouds in the first place. It's going to take those images and adjust them and drape them over the 3D model. So this can be, again, a slow process depending on the size of the images and how many there are and your computer speed. So we're just going to let it run for a while, but this will produce a much, much sharper image.